All right, so when it comes to sectors, as I talked about earlier, uh, 2022, I mean, <laughs> this is what 2022 looked like. You got energy, and then you got everybody else below that 0% line. My next guest, by the way, was in this long before it happened, and he's still riding this wave. I'm going to bring in a Bonson Group Managing Director, David Bonson. And David, you know, I just read where energy companies are actually buying back their own stock right now, big time. This after a huge rally, often on Wall Street, they say, that's, you know, a contrarian sign. But is it smart this time around? You have to remember with Exxon and Chevron, Charles, that this isn't new. They've been big repurchasers of stock for a while. And where I get concerned is when a company starts buying back stock with excess free cash flow and not investing into CapEx, capital expenditures necessary for productive growth of the company. That's also the big political disagreement mm-hmm. is people say, hey, the companies are buying back stock and they're not hiring more. They're not putting in new investment for new uh, projects and factories and opportunities. Well, let's look at Exxon and Chevron, $25 billion of CapEx for Exxon, $17 billion for Chevron. So they are doing a lot of stock buybacks while they are two of the leading dividend payers and dividend growers. They've each grown the dividend 40 years in a row while they represent two of the biggest investors into the future that we have in the stock market. So, uh, so if anyone from the administration is watching, that's your answer. <laughs> because yes. you know, it's become political fodder. I mean, I agree with you. It looks, uh, the, yeah. the sector looks extraordinarily cheap so, in so many different ways. I do want to ask uh, something I saw from you that you wrote the, about 2023. You say ask the same question investors should always ask. And uh, what is that question? I think investors always need to ask, where is their value that is not reflected in the price? This was the huge problem with FANG investors coming into 2022. And admittedly, it isn't their fault. They got numbed because every year you thought it was pricey and it kept going higher, kept going higher. Bubbles have a way of doing that where things get too expensive and then they get more expensive. But the problem was that every bullish thing one could say about Google or Netflix was, or especially Amazon, was reflected in the price and then some. I want people going into next year to say, okay, what's a good investable story that is not something fully priced in? That, to me, is the key question as we enter the new year. You know, I mean, history going all the way back, brilliant, brilliant people who succumb uh, to, to, to just saying forget about it. You know, I mean, to your point, it does, at, at a certain point, it feels like you are missing the ride and you're missing the boat and you do jump on. And uh, uh, Sir Isaac Newton, by the way, he was in a prime example, right? He lost all of his fortune yeah. uh, chasing a bubble that he warned his friends not to buy in the beginning. So I got a minute to go. I know you love energy. We've talked about that in the past, but I see where you like chips as well. And they've been sort of maddening. But do you, do, how do you differentiate chips than from some of the other high flying tech names? Yeah, so I I like, I'm a bottom-up guy, Charles, right? We're stock pickers. We run an active, concentrated dividend portfolio. And I look at a company like Intel that is now investing on manufacturing chips in Arizona and Ohio. It's high IP. We know what Taiwan Semiconductor is doing. And Wall Street hates it. Intel's our uh, worst performer of the year. We've had a great year, but Intel is down a lot. And that's why I love it. Eight times earnings, 5.5% dividend yield, and they are investing in something that is going to make a lot of money in the future, but it costs a lot of money along the mm-hmm. way. That's the contrarian play with chips, and Intel is the way that we're trying to get that, manufacturing into semis into the future. Well, you had me at 5.5% dividend yield. I did not know that. Yeah. <laughs> David, thanks a lot. Always great talking to you, my friend. Thank you very much. Thanks, Charles.